a lot of internet radio shows like there are now. And so a lot of it was just being run, at least mine was being run off like Live 365 back when that was free. And so you had a few people who were doing that personally. But not to get too sidetracked, basically um, we just started talking and had a lot of similar interest. And so we decided, you know, why the hell not? And so we just decided to go ahead and create an independent record label. And believe it or not, we were going to just do a CDR record label on the Internet. It was just going to be very small time, not in it for the money at all. Whenever we started advertising it on the web, though, people were expecting a full-blown professional record label. So when that happened, I kind of went, wow, I really need to do something with this. And so I decided to go ahead and do, you know, go ahead and do it, get a business license and do it the right way. So that's what I did. Of course, DJ Pulse ended up getting caught up with uh, MediaCast One. He started becoming more successful and so didn't have the time to spend on the record label. So I did it all on my own from day one. Okay. Now, since this is a podcast about the occult, one of the things I notice is that uh, occult symbolism, iconography, uh, even your your record label is runes. So how does occultism or magic, mysticism, how does that work into the, the label and the music? That actually has a lot to do with the original uh, Rhythmus Network website. And that's because, like I said, I was doing it as a hobby at the time. So... During this time, I was basically just, um, it, it, like I said, it started out as a personal website, which later ended up having its own domain. It was another thing that kind of, you know, blew up and expanded as it got recognition. Um, initially, I was just doing it for myself, um, just to keep track of things. And um, in fact, the internet radio station was really just so I could listen to my own music at work. Um, but eventually, I uh, ran into uh, Tommy T of DSBP, who turned me on to some really good new um it, some new EBM and industrial that I didn't even know existed. So, of course, that got incorporated into it, and then I started doing the reviews and everything else. How the more um, occult and mystic symbolism got into that was, since it was basically a hobby, and I was just doing everything I was interested in, at the time I was also reading a lot of um, mystic philosophy and uh, magic text and things like that and so that kind of got built into it i was doing um like book review book reviews and things like that started getting incorporated into it as well and of course at the time a lot of my focus was on the um on norse magic so of course that's how the runes got involved and uh with rhythmusnet the the name of the website with the focus on rhythm and music and all of that also got incorporated, which the logo actually for Rhythmusnet was the Vasuda or the Throat Chakra as well as the uh, Rado rune from the Norse symbolism. So it all dealt with um, rhythm and the, the whole concept of everything from, basically it was everything from modern rave culture and its uh, shamanic overtones and all the way back to, of course, the original sound of creation, um, which of course is portrayed in Hinduism as Om or in the biblical text as the word. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at a lot of these albums, and a lot of the groups also seem to have uh, associations with esoteric subjects. Uh, is that a particular subject area that you seek artists out who have an interest in, in kind of an overlap in magic or ritual? Again, that was another irony of uh, synchronicity with Electra Age. Basically, at the time, I was not seeking specifically any bands who had esoteric overtones. A lot of them found me, and a lot of them were um, bands that were pretty much starting to build their recognition in other music areas, um, such as like the industrial music scene or, you know, working with EBM and stuff like that and Electronica. And as I got to work with them on the CD, I actually was able to kind of, you know, pick their brains a little bit and find out what drove them and, and uh, find out what their music was all about a lot more than even they normally publicize. And by doing that, um, I guess it just kind of, the, the whole project ended up kind of attracting that, even though there really wasn't a specific aim in that with Electro Age. The actual concept of Electro Age had more to do with the creative process than anything mystical in origin. At the time, I was reading a lot of Jungian psychology and dealing with archetypes. And so basically it had to do with the creative process and how an individual has to go deep within themselves. And my belief is that when you go deep enough inside, obviously you touch on something that is wholly other than yourself, and you get in touch with everything else. And, of course, um, through mysticism and magic and, you know, 
yoga, <laughs> whatever whatever uh, system someone might be using, they, we find out that these things are reflected in all of these as well. And of course, at the time, for me, this was all very new. This is several years ago. So. Okay. Well, I'm looking at some of the other albums that you've done. We've given away Exoskeleton from The Evolutionaries. We've also given away uh, uh, Asmodeus X's Morning Star. We've given away MV is Blind. We still have a, a number of CDs to give away, including the ones that uh, you've brought some additional ones. So thank you for those. We'll be giving those away too. Actually, let's talk about your, your newest album uh, from a group called Kali Yuga. Uh, yeah, Kali Yuga just got their release out. It's called The Cosmology of Decay. In fact, I got a call from Riley from... Uh, Kali Yuga earlier today saying that he just left um, Havoc, uh, Club Havoc in Houston, and he was playing out there with X Voto. Um, of course, I'm only finding this out myself, so I'm telling anyone who's going to hear this broadcast, it's, it's definitely after the fact. But um, but uh, they're getting around a little bit, so that's a good thing. But um, Kali Yuga is, again, another change. I've pretty much tried to change the music style up a little bit with every band that I've brought into the label. And, um, of course, so... You know, everything from, you know, dark wave into more of a synth pop area and then uh, EBM, etc. Um, even some ambient. And with Kali Yuga, I bring in a little more traditional goth rock. Um, if uh, anyone remembers The Damned from, uh, from Europe uh, back when the young ones used to play on MTV, it was actually how I first heard of The Damned. Um, Kali Yuga, at least to me anyway, kind of reminds me a little bit of Dave Vanny and of The Damned. Of course, they've got their own sound. They're, they're not a copycat band by any means, um, but they do have a little bit of that old gothic flavor, which I really love. Well, let's play a song off this album. What song do you want to play? Uh, why don't we play the, the uh, title track, Cosmology of Decay? <laughs> Sharks that follow slave ships through benighted seas, or the detritus of the vision, these scraps of misery. Gone now the azure lagoons, expended halcyon days, hold off to the knacker's yard, defeated and despair. And the 
designs the best laid plans Lay in tattoos, shattered and undone Fall to the gutter and down the sluice Into the torrent that drains the vigor Cosmology of Decay by Kali Yuga off of their new album by the same title, Cosmology of Decay. And uh, hearing that again just kind of reminded me, it really reminds me a lot also of uh, old Southern Death Cult, which um, most people know as The Cult. Oh, The Cult. Got it. <laughs> right. Yes. I'm, I'm very familiar with them from the 80s. Right. So what do you think is the direction of the music that you're producing? You do everything from industrial to goth i mean is there any kind of music that uh you you wouldn't be interested in or um at the time like of course like i i don't really deal a lot with like metal Mm -hmm. and and anything that's i guess would be considered top 40 or anything pop oriented really um although the actual direction of the label is to try not to end up being pigeonholed into a single sound more or less uh, like a lot of record labels are either known as either a gothic label or a EBM label or an industrial label or a noise label or whatever, and it's kind of this one sound, and all the bands kind of fit into one genre. And so I've always tried to avoid that by um, pretty much displaying, I guess, a lot of my own musical taste and showing the expanse of that. Everything, you know, from ambient electronic to goth rock, you know, and anything in between and, and even beyond. I mean, there's areas I haven't even uh, been able to reflect yet that I really love. so And I hope to go into that in the future, and I'm sure I will. All right. Well, um, as you know, we've been giving a Latex Records CD away on every show. And on the last show, I played uh, K.A.J.'s Under the Moon as the outgoing song. And that's the CD we're giving away today. And since uh, you, p- since you pick the winner out of all of the entrants... Can you give the uh, first name and the uh, location of this winner? Uh, the first name is Michael from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so you have won, Michael, the uh, Electro Age, the first CD that uh, Latex Records put out. So congratulations. I'll be getting that in the mail to you shortly. And the CD for today's show that we're going to be going 